crochet friends it's me Jonah and let's thank your inspirations for sponsoring today's video and please make sure to like comment and subscribe to Jonah's hands and your inspirations some of you may have noticed the shirt I'm wearing and it says bringing the world together one stitch at a time and I actually designed this shirt so I'm really really proud of it and there and then there's a globe that's actually a ball of yarn with my hands holding it. And the message is just bringing the world together in a positive manner. And then in the back, we have Jonah's hands. But today, we will be making wa these waffle stitch dishcloths. Here is a dishcloth up close using the beautiful waffle stitch texture. And as you can see, this New yarn that Yarn Inspiration just came out with is very interesting texture-wise. It has this scouring texture and that I do the rough scrubbing and just to do all the work really. And then we have the traditional and super absorbent cotton that you see more often. And all of it together turns out for a double texture dishcloth that cleans beautifully. But also, it's practical because you can't always make afghans and it's becoming spring and that means spring cleaning. And it's very important to have dishcloths wiped on the cupboards and counters and pots and pans. So that's why we're making this today. And I also recommend having one or two dishcloths for your counters and then one or two for your pots and pans. So you don't have cross contamination with like dirty for your pots and pans and then using that same one on your counters because you don't want to clean something and then make it dirty. And that's another great thing about this. It gets everything off the pan, but it's also very fun to set in your house and it's so bright and colorful. And there's many colorways. This one right here is called green. This one is energetic pink. This one's pretty purple. This one's spring blue and this one is beach house. And you can find all of this yarn in the links to the pattern below. And a couple tips for you after you use one of your dishcloths is not to leave it in a ball because then it doesn't dry nicely. When you're done and it's wet, you just lay it nicely over the middle of your sink or a flat surface so it dries in the same shape so it's not mishappen. That is very amazing that the size the size goes with a 10 inch by 10 inch, and most dishcloths are eight by eight, but this is a 10 by 10. So that means any size hand works and you can get more work out of each dishcloth because it covers a bigger area. And that's another reason I love 10 by 10s. And these dishcloths also make great gifts, but there's going to be a second video out there for you guys to watch about making a companion, making a companion for the dishcloths, these adorable scrubbies. And they're in each color too, so it's like a little companion and those together make the best gift, but still, it's practical. So make sure to check out that video too. Let's begin. So you need a five millimeter crochet hook, <clears throat> a pair of scissors, a blunt eyed darning needle, and of course a sugar and cream scrub off yarn with all of the beautiful textures. And today I'll be using the color papaya. Slide your scissors and needle off to the side. And make your basic slip knot. Okay. And now you'll yarn over from the front around to the back and pull through one. And that is your first chain. Yarn over from the or you could, or you could just put your hook around the back here, and then you have two loops. So you pull the first one. Through the second one, catching it on the groove. I'll repeat that with you twice. More. Four, four. Now, you'll need to 
Repeat that until you get to 41 chains. I just really love these dish cloths because the colors remind you of the great memories and they're just so bright and vib vibrant. My favorite would have to be spring blue and greens. Put your favorite colors in the comments below, please. My mom's favorites are the blue and then the energetic, spring blue and energetic pink. Okay, just gotta do six more chains. I'm completed with my chain now with 41. And now I'll yarn over like we were doing previously for our chain and how you have your first stitch from the hook, your second stitch from the hook, and your third chain from the hook. You'll yarn over and insert into the fourth. You can go through the back loop, the front loop, the front loop on the top, or the front loop on the bottom, or both. Good choice. And then you yarn over again, between the hook and the fabric, and pull up a loop. So now you have one, two, and then the one from your starting chain three. So that's one, two, three. And you yarn over and pull through one like you were doing for your chain, but then pull through another one. So you're pulling through two. Yarn over again and pull through two. That's your first double crochet. Then you yarn over, insert, pull up your loop, and double crochet. Yarn over, <coughs> insert, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through two. And I'll need you to repeat that across, and I'll meet you back here once you're done with that. Okay, I'm back and I've done my double crochet from the fourth chain across. So I have chained two and turned my work. I, I, excuse me, I meant chain three and then turn my work. And that counts as your first double crochet. So you'll wrap and then you go between the first two stitches, just back out, and then you'll come back around to the second and the third. So it's kind of like posting out your first double crochet. And then we'll pull up a loop for the one, for the two, and for the three. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. And that is your front post double crochet. And we're gonna do a front post double crochet and then three double crochets. A front post and then three double crochets. And that brings in the space is right here, and then the posts, the spaces of the posts, which give it the waffled texture. So we've done our front post double crochet, and now in our next stitch right here, we'll just do a double. Next stitch, you're just going to go for your double. So then you have two doubles. But you gotta go for a third. So then you have a post, two plus one more, so three double crochets. And then you do another post, front post, double crochet. And then you do three more back, back double crochets. Just through both loops. And that's all you're gonna do through the end of the row. And then once you reach your chain three at the other side, just double crochet once into that, and I'll meet you back once you're done with that. I have completed the double crochet, front post, three double crochet, front post, three double crochet across, and then with your double crochet in the top of your chain three. So we'll turn our work, and then chain three. Yep. So we'll first double crochet in our first stitch, skipping, double crochet in your sec second stitch, skipping the first because your third counts, your, th your third chain counts as your first stitch. So you do your basic double crochet. And then how you have three coming out at you, you're gonna front post those next three. Just a little reminder, 
To do a front post, you wrap around your hook, go around and through the back, and do a double crochet. Oh, and speaking of hooks, this is one of my ergonomically handmade crochet hooks. And it's in this beautiful sparkly swirled blue, and my name's even inscribed in the bottom there. With a nice red aluminum on top. Okay, so you've done your chain three, half double crochet, three front posts. So you'll double crochet in the stitch that's shying away, receding. And then you'll front post in your next three. And that's, that's what you're going to repeat all the way across. So I'll meet you back once you're completed with that task. So now that you've done your first three rows, your double crochet, your front post, at your front post, your three backs, your front, your three backs, then you turn to work after your chain three, and then went into your double crochet, three front posts, you're just going to repeat row two, and three, that gives you the waffle space. Row two gives you the spaces, and row three gives you the row. Th row two gives you the ridges, and row three gives you the spaces. And once you put them together, you get a beautiful waffle-like texture. So you're just gonna need to repeat row two and three until your project is ten inches long. So once you finish your ten inches, which is approximately. 10 squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because each square or each block of the waffle is one inch. You fasten off and then weave in your egg. And once you leave the back way work a couple times, you can just snip it right off. But you still have the tail at the bottom. So you thread your blunt eyed darning needle and you just Pull it, push it back and forth through your foundation chain. Through one side, out the other. It's kind of like the mattress stitch in a way, but it's weaving in your end because if you knot them, they just come out and then if your dishcloth falls apart, you're just scrubbing your dishes and counters with nothing. And that's a waste of time. And a waste of a beautiful project. So yeah. There we have our papaya dishcloth. But that just reminds me, if you don't, if you don't want to use this yarn or you can't get it, or it's not available, anything of the sort. Well, I really am a fan of this yarn because of the beautiful textures and the scouring part. And then your original cotton. You could just use the basic sugar and cream, cotton, everything. All four weight cottons work. But I really recommend using the sugar and cream scrub off yarn and don't forget to stay tuned for these dishcloths companions adorable scrubbies i really enjoyed making this fun colorful and practical dishcloth with you because everyone needs a good dishcloth and please make sure to like comment and subscribe to jonah's hands and yarn inspirations and the link so everything you need will be below. And by the way, this is my favorite color dishcloth, just in case you're wondering. And for those of you who thought this bread was just a prop, it is not. My mom actually made it, and I'm just going to take a piece right now and cannot wait to eat it. Delicious. She's like a master baker, just so you know. And goodbye and crochet away, friends.